Victor Navorsky arrives at New York City's John F. Kennedy International Airport, but learns that he is not allowed to enter the United States. While he was en route to the U.S., a revolution was started in his home nation of Krakosia. Due to the Civil War, the United States no longer identifies Krakosia as a sovereign nation and denies Navorsky's entrance to the U.S. Unable to leave the airport or return to Krakosia, the Customs and Border Protection Assistant Port Director Thurman tries to make him understand but Navorsky could not understand English. So he then brings him to Frank Dixon, who is an acting field commissioner of the airport, instructs Navorsky to stay in the transit lounge until the issue is resolved. Navorsky settles in at the terminal with only his luggage and a planter's peanut can. Navorsky finds a gate currently under renovation and makes it his home. All the while, Dixon is determined to get Navorsky out of the airport and make him someone else's problem. He tries to get Navorsky to leave by luring him out of the airport by ordering guards away from the exit for five minutes. When he reaches door he understands Dixon is watching him on camera and he then steps back. Navorsky collects money for food by retrieving vacant baggage trolleys for the 25 cent reward from the machine. He frequently meets a female customs and border protection officer named Dolores for clearing his documents. Every time he was rejected. In the meantime, he watches a news about Krakosia on a television. He could not able to understand, and so he then begins reading books and magazines to learn English. When Dixon learns that Navorsky earns money from retrieving vacant baggage trolleys, he employs another man. He then befriends a catering car driver named Enrique who gives him food in exchange for information about a Dolores who Enrique is infatuated with. Dixon then tries to get Navorsky to claim asylum if he is fearful of returning home, so he can leave the airport but it also fails due to Navorsky claiming that he is not scared of his own country. He meets flight attendant Amelia Warren, whom he sees periodically and tries to woo after she mistakes him for a building contractor who is frequently traveling. Amelia asks him out to dinner, but he tries to earn money in order to ask Amelia out instead. He tries to get job in shops, but he fails. After he impulsively remodels a wall in the renovation zone, he is hired by an airport contractor as a construction worker at the airport earning $19 an hour. He then befriends with an airport janitor, Gupta Rajan and Mulroy. Dixon, who is being considered for a promotion, becomes more and more obsessed with getting rid of Navorsky. Navorsky is asked to interpret for a desperate Russian man with undocumented drugs for his sick father. Navorsky claims it is medicine for goat, barring the drug from confiscation and resolving the crisis. Under pressure and the watchful eye of the airport ratings committee, who is evaluating Dixon for an upcoming promotion, Dixon has a falling out with Navorsky. Though Dixon is advised that sometimes rules must be ignored, he becomes obsessed with getting Navorsky ejected from the airport. Gupta overstates the GOAT incident to his fellow co-workers and as a result, Navorsky earns the respect and admiration of all of the airport staff. Navorsky asks about Gupta's family. He says that he had a wife and two kids in India. He left them there 23 years ago once he had a tobacco shop in Madras. Frequently a policeman come and ask him to pay some money. He paid him for some days, and then finally he took a knife and stabs him in his chest. When they try to arrest him, he run away. With Navorsky's help, Enrique and Dolores eventually marry each other. One day, Dixon pulls Amelia aside and questions her regarding Navorsky and his mysterious peanut can. Amelia, who realizes Navorsky has not been entirely truthful, confronts him at his makeshift home, where he shows her that the planter's peanut can contains a copy of the A Great Day in Harlem photograph. His late father was a jazz enthusiast who had discovered the famous portrait in a Hungarian newspaper in 1958 and vowed to collect the autographs of all 57 of the musicians featured on it. He died before he could get the last one, from tenor saxophonist Benny Golson. Navorsky has come to New York to do so. After hearing the story, Amelia feels and kisses Navorsky. After nine months, his friends wake Navorsky with the news that the war in Krakosia has ended, and he can get a green stamp, allowing him to leave the airport. Meanwhile, Amelia had asked her friend, actually a married government official with whom she had been having an affair, to get Navorsky a one-day emergency visa to fulfill his dream. But Navorsky is disappointed to learn that she has rekindled her relationship with the man during this process. When he presents the emergency visa at customs, Navorsky is told that Dixon must sign the visa. But with Navorsky's passport now valid again, Dixon blackmails Navorsky into returning to Krakosia, or he will have Enrique fired for allowing Navorsky into the restricted food preparation area and deport Gupta back to his native India, where he is wanted for assaulting a corrupt police officer. Unwilling to let this happen, Navorsky finally agrees to return home. Upon hearing this, Gupta runs in front of Navorsky's plane and asks Navorsky to go anyway. The plane is delayed 
giving Navorsky enough time to go into the city and obtain the autograph. With the blessing of the entire airport staff, Navorsky leaves the airport after receiving a uniform coat from a U.S. Customs and Border Protection Assistant Port Director and hails a taxi. Dixon, watching Navorsky leave the airport, decides not to pursue him. As Navorsky prepares to take the taxi to a Ramada Inn where Benny Golson is performing, he observes Amelia exiting from a cab, where she gives him a wistful smile. He has a short conversation with the cab driver, telling him that he is from Krakosia. The driver tells Navorsky that he is from Albania and arrived earlier that week. He attends the show and collects the autograph, finally completing the collection. Afterwards, Navorsky leaves and hails a taxi, telling the driver, I am going home. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe our channel for more videos and movies. Hit like and share your comments.